Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, The Bistro, where we will discuss today's hottest consumer trends, predict the future with consumer experts, and learn how elite businesses and entrepreneurs continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. Hello, and welcome to The Bistro. Thank you for joining us. For the Better Business Bureau, I'm your host, Elena Spinola. The fields of science, technology, engineering, and math have historically been highly male-dominated fields. Even as more women have entered the workforce in the last several decades, women continue to be underrepresented in STEM fields. On this episode of The Bistro, we are speaking with Dr. Gwendolyn Boyd, STEM advocate and engineer, to discuss how we can move forward in closing the gender gap by supporting, encouraging, and celebrating achievements of women in STEM fields, and the role women in these fields play in the business environment. Dr. Boyd is an engineer and a prominent advocate of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education with a professional career of more than three decades at Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory. Dr. Boyd was nominated by President Barack Obama and received U.S. Senate confirmation to serve as a trustee to the Barry M. Goldwater Scholarship and Excellence in Education Foundation in 2009 and later served on the President's Advisory Commission on Education Excellence for African Americans in 2014. Dr. Boyd, thank you so much for joining us today on The Bistro. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. Oh, we are honored, honored to speak with you. Dr. Boyd, what drew you to the engineering field? And as a young girl, did you have a positive role model that inspired and encouraged you to pursue a career in a STEM field? Well, I, I grew up loving math. Uh, I loved solving problems. I loved finding out how things work, how taking things apart and putting them back together again. And it was just a, a passion of mine. I loved uh, making things happen and doing things in a different way. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, I did not have any uh, role models in STEM. Uh, in fact, I didn't know any engineers or didn't specifically know anybody in in uh, any of the careers in science or, or technology, but I was persistent uh, and I knew what I'd like to do. And so as I pursued uh, a college career, I majored in mathematics as an undergraduate with a minor in physics and music and then got my uh, engineering degree. Uh, but I knew I, what I wanted to do was make a difference in whatever I chose as my career path. And I wanted to do it in the area of math and science. So uh, I'm excited to always share my story with young people that if you really enjoy math, continue to enjoy math and don't let anybody deter you off that path. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah, sometimes people... Uh, say that they're afraid of math. They don't like math. It's because they haven't tried it. Uh, And so if they do, they'll find out math and science are wonderful subjects. So just out of curiosity, when you found yourself majoring in, in math and minoring in physics, were there many other women at the time majoring in those courses with you? There were not. There yeah. were not. And uh, unfortunately, uh, again, when I was coming through, there was not a lot of encouragement either. Uh, you know, some would say, you really need to find something else to do, you know, because girls don't do math. Uh, but, you know, I, again, my persistence said, this girl will do math because I enjoy it. Sure. It is what I like. It is what I want to do with my life. Uh, and so, again, I think that's part of, you know, what we're talking about today when we look at young people, uh, they need those who are role models who will share their story and say, even without someone encouraging you, if you like math, if you like solving problems, if you like science, if you like being creative and innovative, continue to pursue it and make yourself happy doing whatever it is that you do. Absolutely. Well, you have been a very prominent advocate advocate for STEM education and a role model for so many young women. Can you share with our listeners why it's so important to focus on women in STEM fields? Well, women are naturally brilliant in in solving (laughs) problems. I I would say that uh, because, you know, we're always having to juggle so many things at the same time. So we're we're naturally problem solvers. And that's what scientists and engineers and researchers do. They solve problems using technology, math, science, chemistry, biology, physics. And so naturally, women are able to do these things. 
you know, when we look at the opportunities that are available, there's so many things that uh, that they're able to do. And so if we use that as our, our perspective to point us in a direction that says, I, I do have the skill set, and I love math, I love solving problems, and I want to be an astronaut. I want to be the person who finds the cure for cancer. I want to have that medical breakthrough. I want to invent more robotics or the next cell phone that we don't have to hold in our hands, but it's actually in our hands. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because women are always looking for solutions to real-time problems. And that's what those who are at STEM disciplines do. They solve real-time problems. And so that's why it's so important for women to be involved. Also, women are naturally team, uh, team focused. They love to participate in teams, and they're good at team building and it coming to consensus on solving a problem. And generally, when you have researchers or engineers who are trying to solve a problem, they do it as a team. Sure. And so women bring a different perspective to the team. Uh, they look at problems differently uh, because you know, we're women. And so we may take something and turn it upside down or flip it over backwards and say, what if we did it this way? And so that's why women are necessary at the table for business. Uh, If you're trying to look at going to the next level in your business, you want a woman's perspective because she brings uh, that different um, slant uh, Mm -hmm. to the conversation. Absolutely. So, you know, Dr. Boyd, according to the U.S. Census Bureau statistics, women in STEM fields made up 7% of that workforce in 1970, and that figure has really only jumped to 24 percent higher today. While the number of women has grown, what are some factors that play a role in the underrepresentation of women in STEM fields? Well, I think uh, part of the the issue is that the STEM pipeline is narrowing. And uh, part of what we have to do uh, in this generation is remove the cultural stereotype that women aren't good scientists or women aren't good technical people. They're not good mathematicians. We have to remove the cultural stereotype and let young girls know they can do anything they put their minds to. Uh, Many times, uh, sometimes teachers can't help them uh, because they're not the subject matter experts in teaching math and science. But if they're open-minded and provide their students with opportunities for hands-on demonstrations or bringing speakers into the class or to an assembly to talk about how they can use math and science in the future, that will help uh, the underrepresentation of women in STEM field sure. because the the issue is if young people can see themselves in that future then they'll pursue it with the right kind of passion absolutely and so we we want to always continue to be forward thinking and give our young people every opportunity uh, to see themselves in that future. So speaking of young people and really trying to, you know, encourage young girls and boys, of course, but young girls uh, in these fields, can you share some programs that you're familiar with that can be shared with young people? Well, again, uh, when we talk about, you know, letting our young people know what's available, uh, i go to the the movie Hidden Figures, uh, which, you know, was out last year. And a lot of people had an opportunity to see where African-American women who were computers at NASA had a major impact on the space program. Mm -hmm. And so if young people can see themselves in those roles, uh, instead of uh, thinking that the only people who can wear uh, a white uh, research robe are white males, that they can see themselves as, as females wearing those same, same robes and uh, doing the same kind of work and taking things to the next level. Mm-hmm. And that's why programs in our schools are so important, and programs in the communities, programs like uh, Girls Can Code or the Hidden Genius Project, uh, Saturday Academies, 
programs from the Society of Women Engineers or National Society of Black Engineers. There's so many programs out there, robotics programs, and we just have to make sure that we allow our young girls to participate in these programs. Uh, Our parents have to be aware of the programs, not just in the school system, but in the community as well. Absolutely. Because if they can do those hands-on projects and they can talk to an actual engineer or an actual doctor uh, who, or an actual astronaut or someone who's working in agriculture and turn, turning out uh, new soil so we have new uh, products and new food products, there's so many things that STEM is involved in. I mean, we know naturally technology. People think about that more than anything else. But there's so many other things in biology, chemistry, and so many other areas that girls can do. And we just need to let them talk it through with somebody who's been there and let them know it may not be easy, but you are going to be able to do it. We need to celebrate young girls in front of everybody else so that the natural positive peer pressure comes forth to say that we had a robotics team and the girls won. Uh, We need to provide scholarships for for young girls to be able to pursue their dreams uh, in STEM fields. So there's a a lot that we can do, Uh, but we also, again, just need to celebrate them and push them uh, to their own potential because the potential is there. Yes, well, I can see how you are such a strong advocate and why you are such a strong role model. I hear your passion coming through and it's uh, it's really inspiring. Um, and I want to talk quickly about, you know, you mentioned the movie Hidden Figures and the African-American women uh, in that. And I know that there's not only a disproportionate number of women in STEM fields, but there's also a disproportionate uh, number of women of color in STEM fields. Talk to me about the importance of young women from all diverse backgrounds backgrounds to have inspiring roles in STEM fields. Absolutely. And uh, again, if the pipeline is is small for women in general, it's even smaller for women of color. Uh, But that doesn't mean that the the capacity or the capability is small. It's the lack of encouragement. And so we, as those who are already out here in the field, need to find a way to reach back uh, to these young women and say that, you know, here is an opportunity for you. Do you have a dream? Do you have a desire? If you continue it, you can do it. And we are here to help you. So it means that we have to be intentional when we reach back, especially to young girls of color, and let them know that it's not about your exterior uh, skin color, but it's about what's on the inside, your passion, your dream, your desire to do great things, to solve great problems, uh, to be a researcher, to find a cure for something, to be that person who goes to Jupiter and Mars and uh, all those things that that you can dream of and things that we can't even think of right now. Sure, of course. These young women will solve in the future. Absolutely. Well, we are wrapping up here and this has been such a great conversation. Uh, Speaking of encouragement and celebration, talk to us about the Women of Color STEM Conference and your role as the chair of this conference and then just really quickly some of the benefits of participating in that conference. Sure. The Women of Color uh, STEM conference is a wonderful opportunity for those who who are already in the field to come together, to encourage one another, to network, to find opportunities to talk about growth and innovation, and to be an encourager for the next generation. So it's not only for professional women to come together and be celebrated for the work that they are doing, but also for young women who are in college and even sometimes some high school girls to come to see these women already as professionals so that they, uh, as I said earlier, if they can see it, then they can dream it. So they have an opportunity to see these women in professional roles with great titles and great attributes to their name, who have invented things, who have done great things in their own lifetime, and then they ha- it gives inspiration for the next generation to continue to grow. So the Women of Color Conference, STEM Conference, uh, working with Dr. Tyrone Taborn, 
and Career Communications Group uh, has been on board for the last 22 years, uh, continuing to lift uh, the stories of great women and to continue to inspire women to come together to push each other for professional development, for mentorship and role models to each other professionally, and for the young women who are coming behind them. So it's a great opportunity. Uh, CCMag.com is a place where you can go and get uh, more information. Uh, Women of Color Online is also a detailed information about the Women of Color STEM Conference. But we want to let all these young women know uh, that you are great, you are powerful beyond measure, and if you continue to pursue science, technology, engineering, and math, then the, the, the sky is not the limit, and they can go out and conquer the world. I love it. This has been such a great conversation. You are so inspiring, Dr. Boyd. And I have to tell you, I had the pleasure of attending the Women of Color STEM conference in Detroit last year, and it absolutely was one of the most phenomenal, inspiring and exciting events I had been to in a very long time. And so it was, yeah, my honor to be there so much. Uh, Great. Thank you for sharing those resources about where our listeners can learn more information about STEM fields and the annual Women of Color STEM Conference. Dr. Boyd, we want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. The Better Business Bureau is deeply committed to building and advancing a better marketplace, a trusted marketplace for all because trust always matters. For the Better Business Bureau, I'm Elena Spinola, host of the Bistro Podcast. Until next time, it has been my pleasure discussing women in STEM fields and better business with you. You just enjoyed the Bistro Podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com. And subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureaus, or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service.